All right. It is the Final Percent Podcast. And today, today I'm extra excited. And again, as my assistant would say, I'm just extra. So today is going to be incredible because we are going to interview one of my very best friends on the planet. His name is Austin Yule. He was the best man at my wedding. He is one of the greatest business people that I have uh, been able to converse with and do business with. He's just an amazing, an amazing human being. Um, and he's also the connection of how I met my wife. So to say that he has been instrumental in my life is the understatement of the century. We are going to call him. We're going to interview. We're going to reminisce. We're going to have some fun. Um, how I met him, though, he was going to DU, and I actually recorded his first album, and he doesn't realize it, but I have sound bites, so we're going to be able to hear some of those songs, and uh, it should be fun. So here we go. We're going to give him a call, and we're going to talk to him about what he's doing in business, uh, what he is uh, doing in life. He's made some huge life changes, and I am very excited to introduce you to him, him to you. It's going to be great. And uh, here we go. Hey. Hey, buddy. Hey, we got Austin Yule on the line. What's going on, man? Oh, doing pretty good. I just gave you the introduction of one of the biggest people who have changed my life. Uh, uh, one of my best friends, the best man at my wedding, how I met my wife. And uh, let everyone know that uh, to say that you have been an impactful force in my life is the understatement of the century. <laughs> right back at you, man. It goes both ways. So um, I'm really excited to just kind of talk to you about everything that you've got going on. I mean, you've made some huge uh, life changes, um, both in business and in uh, personal and I'm just kind of excited. I'm and and one thing that I think uh, you'll be proud of me for. Um, when you were talk when we were golfing just recently when I was in Phoenix, I remember you talking about how um, constantly eating meat will will really help, like cause inflammation in the body. And so I actually went over a week with with no meat for the first time in I think maybe ever. So wow, yeah, it was. That's- it was yeah, it was big for me, and and I'll be honest with you, it absolutely helped. I uh, when I was golfing, and I was doing um, uh, kind of a pretty stringent routine. I was golfing a lot, and uh, my back was not hurting. That's great, man. I'm so happy to hear that. So it was uh, well, it was all you helping me uh, just kind of <laughs> try to discover new things, which you have definitely done in the past. But I'd love to hear kind of some of the things that took you on. This journey, um, maybe all the way b- back from when you were playing golf at, at DU, and you um, and you hurt your back, and you started kind of discovering, going down a, a journey that most people don't come back from. Um, but I mean, you rebuilt yourself in, a, in an amazing way. But not, and not just that; it was not an easy road to to say the very least. No, thank you, brother. Well, I appreciate that, man. And yeah, I'd be, I'd be happy to share. It's been, uh, it's been a, it's been a journey for sure, but absolutely a gift. Um, through this process, I definitely feel like I've really found who I am, which has uh, been uh, amazing to uh, experience and, and something that I, I just desire everyone to experience is, is who they are. Yeah. Um, you know, it's something that you, you kind of hear growing up. And it kind of sounds uh, sounds almost unattainable, and it's because it's intangible. Mm-hmm. And so it's uh, it's nice to actually take something that I thought was kind of cliche and uh, make it a huge part of my actual life, yeah. and really find the the solidity of it uh, to kind of be a a bridge to become exactly who I am. So mm-hmm. um, yeah, man, it started uh, you know uh, back in in Denver in college and. Uh, uh, just kind of going through, uh, kind of going through the motions, uh, playing college golf, and um, you know we were we were traveling six days of the week, uh, or five, sorry, five days of the week, six of every ten weeks. Wow. I uh, was a I was uh, double majoring, and uh, you know attempting to still have a social life and uh, <laughs> enjoy being uh, a twenty one year old. So you were really so, taking it easy on yourself. <laughs> so 
yeah, it was crazy. You know, we were we were working out uh, in early mornings and you know class during the day. Uh, you know, golf uh, through the afternoon and evenings, and then still had homework on top of that and traveling and all that. So, and speaking of social life, so yeah, it was just you know, as any twenty year old, twenty one year old, you feel like you're invincible, can handle it all. And, mm-hmm. you know, I wasn't eating healthy. Uh, I was eating a lot of fast food because the traveling and you know, and drinking a lot. And because uh, I was twenty one, and that was that was fun. <laughs> <laughs> so. Uh, just exploring that uh, experience. Um, so yeah, it's just my body just kind of honestly just gave out, and uh, you know, I, I uh, at that point uh, everything was kind of yeah, my body just really gave out. I don't know how else to say other than that. I herniated yeah. this explosion in my neck, one of my back, three cracked ribs, vertigo and psoas. Oh my god! Um, it was just kind of over time. And, uh, but it was one swing, uh, I was playing, uh, playing golf with John Elway up in, uh, Highlands Ranch and, uh, you know, it was a fun day and, uh, playing, hitting a long drive contest on that last hole and, uh, and it just kind of snapped and I had so much adrenaline and it felt, uh, so I didn't really feel it in the moment. We heard a big crack. We thought maybe it was the, the face being dented, uh, cause I hit a 429 on the fly. Um, <laughs> but, uh, it just, yeah, it was. It was pretty fun. I can uh, I can so attest I that he does that. That that is a, that's an Austin <laughs> swing. It's pretty incredible to watch. Uh, so we get up to the to the ball. I had this little lob wedge into a par five, and uh, I get about halfway to my back swing, and I just collapsed. Man, it just kind of all that adrenaline that I was feeling just kind of went away, and and I just felt a ton of pain, and uh, I just I kind of like like an accordion just kind of fell down. Wow. And. Uh, um, yeah, it was kind of an interesting experience. Um, honestly, my coach didn't even believe me. So I had to actually figure out how to drive myself uh, to the uh, hospital. And uh, to this day, I honestly I don't even really know how I got there. I'm just uh, really oh grateful. Gosh. At the time, I didn't really believe in angels and, and you know things beyond. Uh, but I can definitely, looking back, say that someone was definitely looking out for me because uh, – I barely made it. Uh, I was barely able to get out of my car, and uh, and uh, I couldn't even walk into the hospital. So, um, so I had to get help in and kind of relearn the uh, the basics. So, that was a, that was an interesting experience. Uh, I was told I was never going to play golf again, um, which was a, a unique opportunity that got me into uh, into music, actually. Which uh, a few months later would have led me to uh, to you, my friend. Yeah, a few so, months uh, later, something like super, this happened. Super <laughs> Does it sound familiar? Yeah, it does. Man. <laughs> I chopped awesome. up. I chopped up a bunch of sound bits before uh, I hopped on the phone with you because I had to. I had to make sure I knew music. Music is such a huge part of both of our lives. I was just like, okay, he's going to mention music. I'm going to be able to hit a button immediately that has his beautiful yeah. voice on it. Oh, thanks, man. That was kind of that's your epic, man. I love that. Um, yeah, man. I so I was, I was kind of bedridden for a little bit, so I picked up uh, a piano and guitar and kind of started watching a lot of YouTube videos and started kind of teaching myself. So I didn't really have, you know, there's only so much Netflix and and uh, you know I finished uh, all four seasons of Lost in like a month. So, <laughs> so there's only so much I could do. Um, so. I uh, kind of started getting into music. In fact, you know, the reason, one of the reasons I love golf was actually the creativity of it. Um, yeah. It's so unique. Uh, with every with every shot, it's a whole opportunity to do something uh, unique and different. So Okay. Uh, like well, we're talking really- about golf and creativity and, and you're never going to golf again and all of that stuff. What did you think of the Masters, man? Oh, man. Um, arguably one of the best uh, tournaments in golf history. I completely I mean, agree. The, yeah, I mean to see even from day one. Yeah, I mean the top anyone within the top twenty could have actually won the tournament by the end of the four days. It was uh, it was super exciting. Uh, I mean, obviously having Tiger Woods win uh, it is is a phenomenal comeback. I mean, there's I don't know if there's really a, a, a an opportunity in sports for someone to come back like that after eleven years to win something so major like that. Um, yeah. You know, no pun intended. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, it was, uh, it was, it was really, it was really special for golf, but not just Tiger Woods. I mean, obviously I, he's been a mentor, like, you know, an inspiration for me and someone I looked up to, uh, you know, growing up as, as a golfer, someone I, I desired to be like, 
um, as, as with so many other golfers, uh, yeah. to really make golf what it is today. Yeah. But I, honestly, uh, you know, I want to I want to give a lot of credit to all the other golfers as well. Yeah. I mean, they really showed up. I mean, it was a battle, and it was so fun to watch. It know, was amazing. Uh, 20, well, 20 it, golfers within, you know, a couple strokes. It just so it just goes to show you how important, and I think this is one of the things. Just talking about uh, golf as it pertains to life, um, one of the things that I really like about golf is it is. It, it, it really personifies life in the fact that consistency is so much more important than people realize. Because, I mean, we had, I think, three people on one day shoot a 64. Um, mm -hmm. But the next day, they shot a 74. Um, and the great thing about what Tiger was doing is he just stayed in the mix nonstop. And he was, he was so consistent. And that's... In, it has never really been his game. It was, I'm going to dominate you for a couple rounds and it's going to give me enough leeway to mess up and, and do that. But it was amazing to watch the focus and watch the consistency. And, and I think in business and in life, that's why, that's why you watch a lot of successful people play golf because it is, it, I really think it's kind of like, it's a game where you're like in kind of like this microcosm of life you know what i mean where consistency is so important but like the weather can happen or you can hit a tree and you got to figure out how to get out of it and all this stuff it's just it's so much more than a game uh to me for sure and i know for you for you as well oh absolutely well said my friend i mean yes yeah, you know i thought it was a really unique opportunity for people to see what tiger has been going through over the last you know decade and i think they got to see it in in a matter of four days yeah, you know what Tiger has done um, behind the scenes is he's worked his, for a lack of a better word, he's worked his ass off. Now. Yes, he has. I mean, he's yes, really he has. dug in deep when everyone around him was telling him he would never make it, he would never win a major, he should just do everyone, uh, you know, a favor and retire and, and keep some dignity, being the best golfer ever. You know, he just kept his head down, really focused on on himself, and really built him personally, mm -hmm. uh, physically, emotionally, uh, mentally, and, you know, uh, I'm assuming spiritually, uh, that's yeah. kind of what, what this type of, of dive, you know, deep dive will actually, uh, do for, do it. There's just really no way of getting around that. I, so, um, I, you know, having that as kind of the basis mm -hmm. and, and we got to see that over a course of four days where, you know, again, everyone was just like, no way he's not going to make it. There were, there were, wanting everyone else to win yeah and in the end he just kept his head down really stuck with it and uh and really persevered yeah and so it was really fun to see a decade worth of uh experience uh all placed in the four days so that yeah. everyone can truly see the power that he's built for himself i th i thought it was so interesting one of the commentators was saying he said well a lot of these people grew up watching Tiger Woods and idolized him and said, man, I wish I had the opportunity to play against him. And he said, well, maybe after this performance, they will rethink them wanting this. And uh, yeah. this is the personification of careful what you wish for, because having him back is, is going to, it's going to elevate not only everyone else's game, but it's going, and one of the great things, and even if you don't like Tiger Woods, him winning and getting back into the spot like that is so good for the game of golf. It's unbelievable. It is, man. And uh, I couldn't agree more. I, I think one of the, my favorite moments of the entire weekend, and uh, you know, maybe uh, after our time together, I can shoot you a clip, um, is uh, on the 18th hole, or sorry, on the first hole on Saturday, um, before he began his round, uh, they actually, the announcers even took a, a couple moments, and it's about a minute long, I would say, where they just watched him do a breathing exercise, and uh, and so this was this was really the first time I've seen uh, you know golf really focus on something that many people would say is kind of weird or different or uh, something at least you know I've definitely uh, have gone through over the last few years and been saying that you know hey this is something that's been a big part of, of my life using breath uh, as a tool uh, and you know I've been called uh, some interesting things <laughs> um but it was really fun to see uh you know tiger woods using that and then them actually taking a moment to honor and show respect to that mm -hmm. and really show hey that this is 
this is what gets him into the moment. This is what allows him to focus and how he really mm-hmm. does use it as a tool. And it's not crazy that the very thing that gives us life is more powerful than we give it credit. Yeah. Well, I think <clears throat> I thought it was really interesting what you just said, where using breath as a tool. And if you think about it, I mean, your body needs air. No matter what you say, it it really does enjoy getting oxygen. And the fact that we only use it the way that our bodies passively allow us to use it, there has to be more potential in breathing. And I mean, that's the first, when you, when you were talking with me about how you could sing better and this, that, and the other first thing I started talking about was breath support and breathing. Um, I know that that was the first thing that happened with me. And, and I know that from meditation. Um, I watched this whole documentary on Tony Robbins and he does this very interesting breathing exercising or exercise for, I think 35 minutes before he goes on stage because he Mm. has to unleash so much energy that he has to put himself in a completely different place to be able to do that for all of those people. And I just think the whole idea of using breath as a tool, that's just such an amazing way to put it. And I, I wish more people would look into mindfulness and being just a bit more present in life because I mean, we all, I mean, we all are just way too addicted to our phones and this, that, and the other, and we're not trying to actively become more. And I mean, that's really what it's all about is that one of the things that I always say when I'm coaching people or businesses is I, I want you to always be content with what you have, but never be content with who you are. And so you always become more and you can push yourself and you can try to become more. And if you become more, you're going to do more. And if you do more, you're going to have more, but it starts with becoming, but so many people are letting the having drive them. And, uh, it's just, uh, it's an interesting thing. Cause I mean, I think you and I both went through the materialistic, uh, phase of life. And now it's just, if we get cool stuff, awesome. We have cool stuff. If we don't have cool stuff, awesome. We're still a cool human being. And that's not what defines me. Agreed. My friend, well said, uh, you know, it's, it's really interesting. We forget that uh, we're human beings, and we're so focused on human as human doings. And so <laughs> it's, doings. It's, it's, yeah, it's, we're not not here to do. We're here to be. As mm-hmm. You're saying, and, and doing is a byproduct of our being. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's really fascinating because you know, if you think about any any other kind of creature, let's just say uh, on this planet, you know, we don't put an adjective describing the type of being before. Any, it's not like a dog being, it's just dog. You know, it's not a cat <laughs> being or a horse being. You know, it, it, they are so present, and it's an opportunity for us to really learn from them. Yeah. You know, we we are so distracted that we even call ourselves. We have to create an adjective to describe the type of being we are to even seek to understand mm. something deeper. When in truth, it's right there in front of us. It's, mm-hmm. And breath is a great tool to get us there. Yeah, you know, breath is so as you're saying, it's it's something automatic, something that our body does. But when we bring our awareness and our concentration onto it, it really, it really makes us almost forces us into the present moment. Exactly. If you really think about breathing in and out, and you consciously, like manually breathe, everything else falls away. Yeah. It's such a fantastic tool to use, and, and you can utilize it in so many different ways. It's limitless, man. Yeah. Well, it's just as we are. It's 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 funny that you. I I I often will look at other animals as well, and one of the things that I use in my tool tool belt of uh, uh, of talking with people and coaching people is I say, how t- how tall does a tree grow? And the answer is as tall as it can. How t- tall did you grow? The answer is as tall as you can. And if you look at how smart is a dolphin. Well, a a dolphin is as smart as it can possibly be with the resources it has been given in life. Well, can you say the same for you? And that's the thing that Mm. is the problem with human beings right now is we're actively stunting our growth. We are not as smart and as good as we can be with the resources given. And that's why we're kind of in this holding pattern. You watch any movie from the 80s about what the future looks like in 2020 and it is a vastly different future that everybody was hoping and wishing and praying for i mean we haven't really come that far we've been addicted to technology in a very bad way not addicted to information in a very good way you know it's 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 we're we're in a very interesting um time in life and that's why i think it's 
important for people to be much more present and much more aware about what's going on because so many people are looking at life as these, 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 what kind of car can I get? How many followers, how many likes, how many this? And the truth is, is that doesn't matter. There's going at some point in life, there's going to be a different thing that replaces Instagram and there's going to be a different thing that replaces Facebook. So just use everything as tools, be real and be present. Love it, man. Beautiful words. I couldn't agree more. Yeah, well, you you and I have always been on uh, on the same page. Like we're, I mean, I I it's 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 really hard for me to actually even call you my best friend because I I I th- I think you're much much closer to a brother. Like I legitimately, I think that there is some way if we if we pulled out the DNA and 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 found something in there, there's there's absolutely empirical data somewhere that we're related. There's just no way. You know what I mean? It might have been we were brothers Absolutely. in the past life, but I don't I don't really care. There's no way you can tell me that Austin Yule is not my brother. <laughs> <laughs> I, I feel the I feel the same, man. I, I would say, you know, during my journey over the last few years, it's been really fascinating uh, for me because uh, it's been an interesting perspective to start viewing people and looking at people on a soul level rather than just a physical level. Mm-hmm. And, and that's just something that has really opened my eyes in so many different ways because I feel like I'm, I'm a, not necessarily just using my eyes. That's, again, just using my eyes as a tool for my heart mm-hmm. and being able to see people um, past, you know, the exterior the projection. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The projection of who everyone, you know, thinks they should, you know, thinks they should be or thinks that someone else wants them to be. Mm-hmm. and really looking into their soul and understanding who they truly are and uh you know being a mirror for them to recognize who they are is is one of the greatest gifts i've i've uh i've learned and uh knowing that everyone else is that for me uh whether they're conscious of it or not is uh is a gift as well in to receive mm. yeah that's beautiful man so um back to a little bit more about how like crazy thing that things that have happened with Austin. Um, <laughs> true or false, you've been struck by lightning. <laughs> true. <laughs> that's, that's, <laughs> let's, let's talk about the experience of being struck by lightning. Not very many people can talk about this experience. Yeah, I mean, honestly, I, I can't really talk so much about it either. It's, uh, it's not something that you really, uh, you really stay awake for the whole time. <laughs> um, uh, from the little bits that i remember um yeah i was i was 14 years old and playing golf up in flagstaff uh, with my father actually and uh and this was kind of before um uh kind of technology should we say uh had the ability to uh warn people about lightning storms and all that so this was kind of right right before that um, mm. after that probably a year or two later they ended up getting the technology for that which was great um but uh but yeah it was it was interesting i was on the ninth hole and this really really large tree um and uh and it just fortunately it hit both myself and the tree um it's really interesting after doing some research later i found out that lightning actually goes from the ground up and so as a golf course it's, there's a ton of uh this metal uh, because of all the sprinkler systems going through oh, under, yeah. under the ground, right? And so that's why golf courses are actually a, a, a strong conductor for that. So between the tree and the, and that uh, and, and you know underground, I was I happened to be in an interesting position. So I didn't get the brunt force of it. So I got I honestly I got lucky. Yeah. Um, but uh, but yeah, it did knock me out. Um, I just remember a very very lar- loud noise. And uh, like it was like a large like crack uh, noise, and uh, a ton of pain, and then I passed out. Uh, I woke up in the uh, you know kind of in the emergency room area, and uh, that was uh, that was interesting. And I, I had uh, my lip actually split in half, so I had to get stitches, and uh, it was uh, it was definitely interesting. Wow, that is just unbelievable, man. That is unbelievable. Well, yeah, so, yeah. so let's, let's talk a little bit about, um, you're, you're fully vegan. I am. Yeah, man. So back to kind of, um, a little bit, uh, earlier, uh, you know, I spent, uh, you know, I, 
after getting to, to know you and, and through that process, which is a ton of fun, uh, as you know, through pretty much most of our relationship, I was struggling with, with back injury. And, yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, I didn't play golf for years and, uh, you know, it was, uh, it was difficult. Um, and I, I went through every, everything that you could think of, uh, all the physical things. And, uh, you know, I didn't even think to go in terms of, uh, some sort of soul level or emotional level. Uh, to me, it was only physical. I just, I didn't really have any awareness beyond that. Um, so as I was about to, after gosh, six years, I, I was finally I was like, look, I'm in so much pain. I can barely get up in the morning. It took me about two hours just to get up. And I was you know, 20 five years old I felt like I was 90 and uh it was it was really really difficult so it's finally like you know I talked to my parents and they're like you know I guess you know they happen to know a great surgeon and so uh we were gonna we did all went through the whole thing and uh I was a great candidate for a unique surgery to replace a disc in my neck and um before I did that actually thanks to the, the surgeon um his name's Dr. John Hall he's phenomenal um, he uh, recommended I go uh, check out yoga and meditation and see, uh, see if that helps. And if I don't find anything, then I've definitely exhausted all options and then to go do the surgery. So um, through that process, I uh, ended up meeting, meeting this amazing, amazing person. Uh, her name is Amber. Yeah, and, she's, uh, I can also attest to that. She is like, she's one of those, she's a salt of the earth human being. Like she's literally what God intended the earth to be made of. I absolutely agree with that. She's incredible. Thank you, man. That's, uh, that's a gift to hear. And, and I couldn't agree more, man. She, uh, she was a mentor and at first, and, uh, I've learned a ton from her and, uh, and, you know, within a matter of months, focusing on yoga and meditation uh, I was actually able to um, pretty much heal my back and was, didn't have to get surgery. So um, it was great because through that process, I also, uh, you know, she, we became best friends and I got to fall in love with my best friend. Oh, darn so, it. That just, that is her. awful. I, 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 I <laughs> yeah. unfortunately know exactly what that's like. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, I couldn't have asked for a better thing. And, you know, it's, it's, I, I'm a firm believer in, in yoga and meditation uh, and food as medicine. Um, but honestly, I, I think love is the greatest medicine of all. And mm. I'm just really grateful that I got to see, you know, she, she helped me find, she gave me the tools that I needed to understand who I am. Mm. You know, when she first said, you need to dive deep within, I was just like, what? I mean, <laughs> uh, I mean, that's, what, that what are you mean, talking about? What, what kind of metaphorical sense. diving board are you trying to be? <laughs> yeah, I'm not Michael Phelps. <laughs> I don't know. What do you, you know, I, I don't even know what, yeah, it just didn't even make sense. So I literally, I spent months just meditating on that and I got nowhere. And then I realized because the whole time I was, I was using my, my mind, I was using my brain uh, to dive deep within instead of my heart. And it was, it was when I truly understood how to start using my body and my mind as tools for my soul is when I really started to see a complete shift in my life. Everything just started to come into alignment. And I mean that physically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually, because it started spiritually. It started internally, and then the external uh, started to reflect what was going on internally. Wow. Because so much of what we are taught from a young age is that the external is what helps define us as the internal. But it wasn't until I started being rooted into who I am internally did my external environment follow suit? And it literally, it was the most empowering experience I ever had. And it allowed me to bring so much intention and purpose into everything I do, including what I eat. Mm. You know, that is fuel for, yeah. for who, I, who I am on a daily basis. I literally practice every day eating. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, it's something I knew that I would really, you know, uh, do every day. So same with breathing, right? Yeah, exactly. Uh, so the more intention and purpose we can bring into the things that we do every day, it you know that's just something we're going to get better and better at. Mm. And so when I became very focused uh, into what I was putting into my body uh, and allowed food to be medicine, mm. uh, you know these are things that have, humans have known for forty thousand years. Mm. Just as you were saying, though, we've gotten to a point where you're we stopped listening to our bodies because we're so distracted by everything else around us. Mm. So this isn't, you know, a lot of people will say, Oh, this is kind of new age stuff, but in truth, it's not. 
Uh, you know, in the end, I do feel there's a beautiful blend between modern technology and medicine uh, in alignment with using food as medicine. Oh, I agree. Um, you know, um, you know, I think there's so we've, we've seen, uh, I mean, we just had an amazing client just, you know, uh, go backwards in terms of his prostate cancer. Yeah. Uh, we've helped type two diabetes through this. Um, you know, it's, it's a breast cancer. I mean, it's really amazing. Uh, you know, even just people who just want to uh, be preventative. Uh, so much medicine is focused on reactionary mm. instead of being preventative. Oh, yeah, you know, that's how a do I... great point. Yeah. So, and, and that's just a good point to just focus in terms of life. What am I, how am I approaching things uh, reactionary instead of just focusing preventative? Mm. Because reactionary takes so much more time and energy and effort to go backwards where preventative is keeping you always looking forward. Yeah. Well, so <clears throat> while we're, while we're on the subject of food, because here's the number one thing when, when I say I'm going to go, I'm going to go vegan for, for a week. And actually, so just so you know what Kayla and I have decided yeah. to do, um, we're, I'm only going to do red meat, um, twice a month for only two meals just because, mm -hmm. um, and and to be honest with you, because the whole chicken industry, um, I actually did some consulting work for um, one of the biggest uh, companies. I obviously, because I did some consulting work, I can't really say their name, um, but one of the biggest chicken manufacturers in the entire country. Um, mm -hmm. And after doing consulting work and logistic and helping with leadership and all of that stuff, but knowing more about how chicken was made. It's literally the one meat that I cannot eat anymore. It's it's impossible for me to want chicken, um, understanding kind of what they're going through. So what Kayla and I are doing is we're going to do – we get two meals of, of red meat. Um, we're going to do um, – we found a local farm because obviously living so close to Boulder, we found a local farm to get – to source all of our meats, and we're going to primarily try to be on, on turkey and from local – places, but we're going to have one week out of the month where they're, where we're a hundred percent vegan, just so that we can kind of reset and really see how our body's reacting to certain things. And the thing that made me do that is after I did that week of just, Hey, no meat, I'm going to eat really clean. We're going to really understand what, what's going on using the, the, the food as the fuel, if you will. Um, I, I noticed a big difference. I felt so much different and it was so funny. Kayla asked me, um, she says, well, what is the main thing that you're, you're feeling? And I looked at her and I said, I feel like I, I, I sweat more easily. And she goes, what do you mean? I said, well, I had a cheeseburger today for the first time. And I felt like it was literally hard for my body to push the sweat through my skin. Cause it felt like there was stuff in it. And I was like, that's, yeah. the, that's the first time I've ever had that sensation. And she goes, that is so gross. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're right on, man. I mean, that's what I meant by listening to your body. Yeah, we are so distracted, and we're eating so much food that's not meant to be in our body. In yeah. all honesty, absolutely. Um, there's, you know, with my dad being in the meat industry for over 30 years, you know, I've learned a ton about about meat, and and I mean, there's a reason why him. He's gone, you know, he's been vegan for over a year now. Yeah, let's uh, let's just like we think about that. Okay, I was gonna bring that up a little bit later, but your dad was going through some health issues. I mean, he's obviously no longer a spring chicken, but you introduced this lifestyle to him. He was in the meat industry for 30 years now, and I mean, when we say meat industry, he was a heavy hitter in the meat industry on on a level that most people just cannot fathom. Now he's vegan. Now he actually does look younger. He's more vibrant, and he is doing fantastic. He's lost weight. It's really yeah, cool. It is, man. I mean, he's 75 years old, and in a year, he's back to his college weight. Oh, come uh, on, man. That his, is so cool. Uh, yeah, man. He's, uh, he's, he can ride his bike 25 miles. Oh. Um, yeah, I mean, he, you know, he drives. You know where he lives. He, yeah. he rides his bike all the way down to Tempe and back. Oh man! Like it, yeah. That's it's it's, and he he does a five mile walk if he doesn't ride. So it's kind of one or the other. I mean, that's he'll awesome. carry his clubs and walk eighteen holes, no problem. Um, and you know, my dad just being one of the smartest human beings I've ever met in my life. I can um, absolutely attest to that. He said that over the last year, he's gotten more clarity and more, and he felt more sharp than he's ever felt in his entire life. That's incredible. Okay, so and, uh, so talking yeah, about man. the vegan thing. So here's the big thing that happens when um, 
I'll tell people I'm on, like, I'm going to, because obviously I told people, hey, I'm, I'm, because they'd say, hey, can I go grab you food? I say, okay, well, you need to grab me food from this specific place, and I want it to be these specific things, and make sure you say gluten free. And they'll say, mm-hmm. wait, are you going vegan? I said, well, for for one week out of the month, I, I do want to do that, so I can kind of understand my body just a little bit better. And the mm-hmm. the first thing that everyone says is that through from a vegan standpoint, it's way too carb heavy, and it's actually counterproductive, and it's this, that, and the other. What do you have to say? Because there's no way people have not said those same things to you. Uh, I mean, yeah, honestly, a diet is it's what you make of it. And in truth, for me, um, you know, even veganism to me or being the word vegan is limiting uh, in terms of a word. For me, it's more whole food, plant based. I feel is a better terminology um, because uh, I feel like it really describes what it is. Uh, normally, it's to me, it's not a diet. It's actually a lifestyle. Mm. And most of these, most of these things going on out there are, are really diets. Yeah. And yeah, they may have a short term um, benefit, but the real question is at what cost? You know, are you, yes, in two or three months you might look great, but at what cost to your long term, your longevity? Mm. And I think that's a lot of the issues out there. And I mean, yeah, you can be vegan and eat Oreos all day. Um, cause yeah, they are now they're vegan. So, and, 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 and that's, that's great. Uh, you know, yeah, you're doing a lot to help the animals and I'm so for that. But, but you're not helping you yourself. yourself? <laughs> no. Um, I mean, but you can eat meat and have a very, very carb heavy diet too. I mean, yeah. so there's, I, you know, I would say that, um, you know, I, I'd say it's just a lack of education for people. Oh, that's and such that's a good okay. way to put it. You know, yeah. I mean, that's where it was for me. Uh, you know, we only... We're, our knowledge is limited by awareness, and uh, and so that's our opportunity to really um, start to seek to understand different approaches. And, and not every, you know, I'm not saying plant based is for everyone. You know, I it, it would be great. I think it's right now. There's a ton of studies out there that show that, um, you know, even limiting your your meat intake by 50 percent is the greatest thing you can do to help the planet right yes. now, even more than owning an electric car. Well, I mean, um, the, well, a lot of people don't realize that uh, um, the biggest, the biggest uh, methane producer are cattle farms. Yeah, man, it's uh, some deadly farts going on there. <laughs> you know, it, it Ooh, deadly funny, farts! Actually, a lot of truth. <laughs> Well, let's um, uh, let's talk a little bit about what do you have going on right now? How can people? Uh, contact you how can people get in touch with you if they want to know a little bit more and get guided properly and and i mean the thing is is you you do a couple different things obviously there's there's uh kind of some very specific type life coaching um you do golf coaching for a bunch of pro golfers um and then i mean you have very specific case studies of of things that you've been involved with where we are reversing diabetes we are reversing uh, cancer, prostate cancer, breast cancer, and you are changing families. You're getting families to talk and, and, and coexist with each other on a level that they didn't even know existed. Um, if, if that is for anybody, um, who listens to the podcast or they just maybe want to, um, like pay for an hour of coaching to really say, Hey, if I want to if I want to understand more about vegan uh, lifestyle, but I want to do it the right way, and I because the the problem is is we live in the information age, but no, no one is focusing on the proper information. And because I've seen you, not only because it starts with yourself, and I can absolutely attest that you have transformed yourself, and I have met the people to where you have transformed their 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 life. Um, when I was talking to, to the, the daughter of the, the guy where you reversed prostate cancer, I mean, come on, this is amazing stuff, man. So how, how do people connect with you on a deeper level so that they can, um, take the journey the right way and have much more focused, uh, information, intentional information, deliberate information, vetted information, and, uh, and, and get it straight from the, the proverbial horse's mouth, if you will. Yeah, man. Great, great question. Um, I've got a, a, a kind of a, a longer response to that um, because first and foremost, um, you know, my partner, Amber, she's incredible and amazing. And definitely this is what she's here to, to, 
to do. I mean, to be, uh, she, this is who she is. And, and she's really taken a ton of time and energy and effort to, to really learn this because she's lived it. She's used food as medicine to help her through uh, different ailments in her life. And, uh, and it's really incredible, her knowledge. Um, but, I, but both her and I would say that we are simply guides. We provide some information. But in truth, we are not the ones make, making the effort. All of our clients are successful because they put in the effort. Mm. You know, you don't just hire a personal trainer to lose the weight for you. You have to put in the effort. And that's what, that's what we do. We provide a, a guidance and we really seek to understand the individual as a whole person. You know, not just, uh, not just the outside. You know, we really understand you from a uh, body, mind, emotion, and spirit center. So that, you know, we're not attempting to say, hey, this size 10 shoe fits everyone. We have really personalized programs uh, developed for each person. And for every single one, it is different. Uh, you know, even between like, you know, a husband and wife or, you know, um, you know, two, two friends or something like that. It doesn't, they can't be on the same, even if they're in the same household, they can't actually be. We've had families that are actually, all, all of them are on a completely different program. But the approach is from a similar way, and that that helps them do it together. Mm. Um, so I just kind of want to say that first and foremost. Um, second, uh, you know, we are we do we, we do live in an interesting uh, age where technology it can be a tool for us, mm -hmm. and we are so if we want to find a house or an apartment or an or a car, we are willing to do the research. I mean, how many houses or apartments or cars do you see before you actually make a decision? Yeah, right. But when we put something in our in our mouth and that becomes a part of who we are and really fuels us, like literally fuels us, you know, we don't really take the time to do that research and yeah. understand. And and that it, to me, it honestly should be split. Um, I mean, or at least put more intention into what we put into our bodies. So I would recommend everyone just taking the time to first and foremost do some research. Yeah. And see, because there are, there are, you know, there, there's honestly, they're going to see there's, uh, there's information on all sides. Yeah. And, uh, you know, there's, there's, I would say there's not one right answer, but, uh, you know, after taking the time to do some research, you know, I think it would be fun to, uh, you know, if, yeah, if someone wants to reach out to us, um, you know, that's what we've been doing this as a for-profit company for the last three years, but we are actually uh, just putting, uh, shutting that down as we just started our nonprofit. Mm. You know, our goal is to allow this type of information to be non-biased and really individualized, um, both on one-on-one -on -one coaching, but also create programs that are available for people who, uh, you know, can't afford it. Mm. Uh, they, they shouldn't have to pay a lot of money to get information for something that everyone does, which mm. is eat. <laughs> you know, to me, that is so important. Uh, you know, that, that should just be free and available. And that's what we're seeking to do with our nonprofit is really educate people for the health and wellness of the body, mind, and spirit, and really start aligning them. Mm. Um, you know, there's, everyone has a unique approach and, and we, we encourage that. I mean, but in the end, you're, you know, if you go, if you have a, a, a faith, uh, you know, and you go to your church or, or, or mosque or whatever, you know, temple, whatever it is that you believe in, you know, they're not talking to your doctor and your doctor may not be talking to your, um, you know, psychologist or your, um, you know, life coach or yeah. whatever it is, you know, there's no integration. Mm. And our goal that we've done with every one of our clients is actually talk to everyone that's a part of their team or, you know, because uh, in the end, everyone does have a team. Mm. No one ever does this on their own. No, they don't. I have a thing called life. So yeah. <laughs> we just really take the time to understand everyone within themselves, but also everyone around them. And so that they're all kind of on the same page mm. and really uh, effectively communicating yeah. uh, for the benefit of the individual. And we feel that is the, the truth of this really is that, you know, healthy individuals and companies make a healthy community and healthy communities make a healthy planet and a healthy planet makes a healthy world. Yeah. And that's really you know, a healthy universe. And so, yeah. you know, we, we see the big picture and we're just seeking to start with something small and really grow it into something unique uh, that is uh, all inclusive and focused on unconditional love and non-judgment mm. uh, and provide a platform 
uh, for everyone to 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 really just be involved and uh, and make a difference and be and, and be exactly and be. yeah exactly you know exactly so one of the things that uh, um, I've been using for a lot lately, and I think you and I will just be on the same same page on this. But I mean, that's I mean, I, th- I think we were kind of expecting that. Um, but uh, w- when I'm coaching people, one thing that I have because it, it seems like a lot of people will call me if they get on one of my coaching programs, they will call me to try to lift them up and motivate them and do all of this stuff. And I often end up telling them, I say, look. I, I appreciate that you are looking to me for guidance and you're looking to me that for, but I just need to be very clear. It is not how I talk to you that will change your life. It is how you talk to you that will change your life. Yeah. I, I am merely trying to give you Beautiful. enough information so that you start looking in the mirror and your self talk starts actually changing the way that you think and perceive and execute your life. And and I think that's one thing that that uh, is is good to tell people here is whether it's uh, a coaching program that I'm doing or one that you're doing is our ultimate goal is to shift and change how you talk to yourself and about yourself inside so that you can become someone who's much more confident and much more connected with who they were supposed to be on this planet. Love it, man. Couldn't agree more. I mean, that's uh, absolutely so how do we connect with you and Amber? Yeah, man. Um, so our, our new uh, nonprofit is a 501c3. We actually just uh, got it through. Um, and, uh, and so we are, it's called Suivera. That's S-U-I-V-E-R-A. And uh, it's actually a word that kind of came through uh, in a meditation. Uh, Sui is Latin for self and Vera is Latin for truth. Oh, that's awesome. And in the end, that is what we, uh, as an option for everyone to seek, when they're here is understanding their each individual self truth. And when we can really, uh, you know, start to honor and respect everyone's self truth and, uh, and lift people up, man, it's, it's, uh, I mean, imagine what we can do with that. So, you know, uh, so yeah, people can go to suivera.org. We are just starting this. This is brand new. We've uh, started getting our first few donations, which is super exciting. Um, but, uh, and you know, it's a really, our opportunity was, through this process is actually our, our services will actually be a write-off for people, which is pretty fun too. That's so, awesome. uh, you know, our goal is to, to make it available for everyone. Uh, we do, we will have some, some free information on there, but you know, if you do want to do one-on-one coaching, um, we'll even have families come stay with us for a week or we'll have people fly us out to their place for a week and stay with them. Um, so there, there are multiple ways that we can approach it and we have, uh, a lot of unique, uh, you know, we basically, we offer a 15 minute free call and oh, that's great. kind of talk to the person to understand. Um, so you can either, uh, reach us directly. Um, uh, our main email is info at suivera.org, or you can uh, reach out to us on social media. Uh, we have, uh, Facebook is, uh, you know, facebook.com slash suivera.org. And then our, uh, Instagrams, uh, both, uh, Amber Mike Sell and, uh, it's at Amber Mike Sell and at Austin Ewell awesome. um, on Instagram. So uh, there's multiple ways to reach us. Um, uh, and we're just, uh, we're really looking forward to, to assisting people and, and connecting with people. And, you know, if we're not the right fit, we, we love to, re- to refer people. And, and Greg Kimball is absolutely one of them. <laughs> so, you know, uh, we love amazing, amazing heart centered people who are looking to make a difference. Um, we know there's more than one approach. Mm. And, uh, and it's, it's, it's fun to watch Greg as, as he does what he does to make a difference in this world and inspire so many. So, well, I, I thank you for your kind words. And, uh, just to reaffirm that with, uh, with wherever you're at in life, um, I can absolutely attest to the fact that, uh, Austin and Amber are uh, in a zero judge free zone. I went to his apartment. I was very, very hungry. There was a burger place downstairs and I had no qualms about going down, getting an, a, a burger, bringing it into his house and eating it right in front of him. And he did not care. He just wanted to hang out with me. So he's very judge free. He just, he wants you to have the, the information, make the decision. And, uh, I just invite you to find out more about what he's got going on because, um, having him in my life has been an absolute blessing and uh, I would just love to share Austin with the world because I think I think we have to 
we have to get more people who are, like he said, heart-centered and who truly want to help out into the spotlight so that we can actually be focusing the right information and help people out on a much deeper level. I appreciate those beautiful words, man. And, and yeah, man, we're, uh, you know, uh, anyone, uh, anyone who's listening can reach out to me directly uh, at Austin at infosuivera.org. That's A-U-S-T-I-N at S-U-I-V-E-R-A dot org. Uh, ask me a question. That's what I'm here for. I love doing what I do, whether, you know, I had all the money in the world or no money. This is what I would do. And this yeah. is why I'm, I'm really putting my passion and heart and soul into this because, this is something I truly believe in, and um, and we're actually pretty it's kind of fun. We're actually uh, pretty close to finalizing an app, uh, a Suivera app. Oh, that's great! Um, so that will be out here pretty soon. That you'll be able to go to the website and you know and download that. It's gonna have a, some fun information, and even actually our book, uh, which is a six month guide to expanding life perspective. It's called Opportunity for Expansion. Um, our goal is actually to you'd be able to go on the app, uh, kind of sign up for it. And, uh, and get one of the expansions uh, sent to you uh, through push notification every morning for six straight months. Oh, that's great. And that way you start your day with intention and focus, and, uh, and uh, it's, it's going to be fun. So, yeah, to me, it's going to be really neat. So just keep an eye out for that uh, as we keep building. And, again, we're still in the very beginning stages of the nonprofit, but any assistance, any help, any ideas, you know, uh, Suivera is, is all about, seeing from everyone for everyone this is not we have no ownership over this this is uh, a group effort uh, awesome. this is a, a, hopefully a planet-wide effort that we look forward to uh, really experiencing well that's amazing man thank you so much for coming on to the podcast and uh, I think it's uh, um, it, it we're definitely gonna have to start making you a regular on the podcast so as you hit milestones mm-hmm. and you've got some things you want to talk about we'll bring you back on and we'll talk about different things that you've got going on and make some fun announcements. Um, but just thank you so much for your time and energy and uh, your thoughts and ideas. We, we really do appreciate it. I certainly appreciate it. And, and I really do. I love you dearly, man. You are just, you're my brother and uh, nothing's ever going to change that. I love you too, brother. Thank you so much for, for this amazing uh, chat. Uh, anytime. It's pretty fun. Cause we just pretty much kind of chat like this uh, all the time. Yeah, so, no, it's, <laughs> it's, uh, it's it, it was really nice. It was, able to, yeah, it was. It was literally no different yeah. than us just catching up. So. <laughs> yeah, this is my very, very first podcast. So, um, but uh, this is this has been a ton of fun, man. And I appreciate uh, uh, all the all the beautiful words and 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 support and uh, brothership, should we call it? Yes. Uh, and, uh, <laughs> and just tons of love to you and 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 the whole KMG family. Uh, miss awesome. you guys. Um, and, uh, and lots of love, man. And, uh, and yeah, anything that we can do to support you, uh, we're, we're here too, man. Perfect. Thank you so much. I really do appreciate you, buddy. All right, brother. Have a wonderful, wonderful day. We'll talk to you, man. All right. Bye-bye. All right. Bye. All right. Without, with, with I mean, I, I don't know. I'm at a loss for it. I love that guy. I think he's just doing some amazing things and he has just one of the biggest hearts, uh, purest souls there is. So, um, I really invite you guys to go to suivera.org um, and uh, just see what they've got going on. Um, it's it, His journey has just been amazing. I mean, he um, was adopted. He was struck by lightning. He rebuilt himself. Uh, he broke his back. I mean, the guy is just... I often, say, I often say when people ask me what I do, I'm a perseverance expert, and I would absolutely put him in that same category. So... Anyway, I am going to play a little bit more of the the song that Austin and I did on the way out, but thank you guys so much for listening. Um, This has been The Final Percent with Greg Kimball and Austin Yule. Thank you so much. So every day I'm open, praying and wishing that I'll find That the love of my life is around the next The final percent in my mind's eye. Oh, Baby, I believe that love and trust is enough So trust that my love is made just for us You're the missing piece of my puzzle, girl And you are